And it is, I mean, it's that black excellence, what you guys are doing right here. another episode of Black and Excellent, where we talk about all things Black and Excellent. So today, of course, we have Mr. Does It All, Joseph David Jones. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. You may know him from your favorite superhero in Arrow. You may you may have recently seen him in the 4400 on CW. And also, you've probably seen him beside the loved Denzel Washington. But today, we are here to talk about you. So let's jump right into it. Yeah. The last time we did an interview with you, you mentioned that you used to be a sucker for uh, fan theories. Yeah. Um, as, as a fan of the 4400 growing up, do you mm -hmm. remember any theories you, uh, you had about the show that you can share now? It's funny because like back then when I was doing it, I, I thought like, I thought there were aliens. And like, I mean, I did that, that whole theory is still like heavily in what people like assume today with this iteration of it. But I don't know, just because of the nature and how they returned and stuff like that. Like I thought they had gotten abducted by aliens and like mm -hmm. got back on, you know? Um, but without, you know, revealing too much, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that may or may not be the case. You know, I, it might be aliens. But <laughs> that was a theory that I had when I was watching it with my family. And it's also a theory that fans have watching this one with us. <laughs> okay. So you have experience playing superhero, a superhero. Yeah. Um, and right now in the 4400, you play a social worker. As someone who's played superheroes in the past, and you've obviously been grounded in this role, do you feel like yeah. what are Jarrell's super powerful. it's funny because like I'm, I'm like a heavy comic book nerd um I love sci-fi I love anime I love like I love that stuff and I love powers so to be on the show where everybody has powers and not have powers is like a knife in the heart yeah. and the show runners know this so they like they constantly tease like you know maybe uh next season you might get some powers and then like knife but like everybody is getting their powers, bro, and they can move things, and they. It's so, just not so are you backstage just jumping off of high things with bro, the cape? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just low key pitching storylines where somehow Jarrell just gets powers, like. <laughs> but um, I would say, Jarrell, the social worker, um, his superpower is I, don't know, I guess always being able to seek out the truth in something to never like take something at face value and to always try to seek out what is the i guess the best possible truth for his people or for the people who are being contained so i feel like that's that's sort of his superpower let's move a little bit into the other things that you do because you're also not only are you an actor and a producer you are also a musician so yeah. I hear that you have an EP coming out. Um, it's a full album. Oh, but yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I've been working on it while shooting the show and it has been exhausting, but the music is coming out so good. So I'm so excited to like actually release this thing. Can you tell us a little bit about your like aesthetic? Like what's your music? Yeah. What do you want us to feel when we hear it, when we're listening to your music? Yeah, it's funny because when I was growing up, I gravitated towards so many different types of music but i don't know just being the black kid whatever i felt like i was only supposed to like one type of music or like you know r b or hip-hop or something like that so i would hide listening to other genres of music just because i was like people gonna call me out on it it'll be like you know man you ain't black or some on some like weird stuff or whatever so this album is is pretty much a playlist of all of those genre types that like embodied what created my love of music and you know the things that I felt like I couldn't fully express in myself as a kid because I don't know I, cultural pressures I guess but that is what this thing is so it is a playlist through the different genres of music that influenced me 
So as a Detroit girl, I was yeah, super yeah. excited <laughs> to know that the 4400 is based in Detroit. I know it wasn't filmed in Detroit. How did you, yeah. how did you and the rest of the cast, how were you able to bring that Detroit vibe to set? You know, it's crazy. There are so many historical buildings in Chicago that look like Detroit. Mm -hmm. And like, we shot the movie Detroit, well, we shot uh, like a good portion of it in Boston, but like a large portion of the movie Detroit that I did was shot in Detroit. We shot it like Motown. We shot some of the streets and stuff where the Algiers Motel incident happened. Um, and going from there to like shooting here in Chicago and some of the neighborhoods that they have, like the historic neighborhoods, I'm like, yo, this, I don't know how you guys found this, but this looks like a street, like straight out of Detroit. Um, and I feel like they do a good job of finding the locations that we can shoot at that feel authentic. And then, you know, they got B-roll footage of Detroit that, that goes in between the shots to be like, and remember, this is like the Detroit skyline. But at no point in time do you, I don't know, do you not feel like it's Detroit? The 4400 is unique, uniquely positioned to tell a variety of stories and tackle some social issues like that span over hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. um, what are some historic events that you hope to see highlighted during the, like in this reboot? reboot? I guess uh, you're gonna see things in the civil rights movement. You're gonna see sort of medicine at the turn of the century, but not only that, like, the, the, the LGBT communities in like the early 1920s in different cultural like norms that were just sort of lost through time. Um, what I'd like, to, I would like to see obviously what happened in, in Tulsa um, represented in there. Oh my God, Haitian rebels from when they took over the, the, the slave owners um, mm -hmm. in Haiti and like overran and revolted on the island and like won and removed all the slavers from Haiti, from Haiti. But it's like, they're characters who represent so many different aspects in our history in this show. And because of that, like in a very organic way to the story, you then learn about who these people are. I think there's so much uh, to learn. Yeah, definitely about our own history. I definitely think there's so many spaces to learn, um, especially because we haven't, as black people, we're not necessarily given the history we should be learning. So like the Tulsa massacre, I can honestly say that one of the first times I heard about it was definitely watching Watchmen and so grateful to have like these types of uh, learning it, like experiences being like kind of widespread and giving more information. And it is, I mean, it's that black excellence, what you guys are doing right here, because the history that they teach us is one of enslavement and being in change and like, the stuff that just somehow doesn't seem to make it to the history books are the moments where we did have our own Wall Street, the moments where, you know, we were uh, thriving and excelling and that just kind of got snuffed out or like, you know, and shining a light on that is what we need more as a culture to see Black people in positions of excellence, not only now, but like throughout history. Can you give us like a couple second seated workout tutorial? Oh my God. <laughs> That's wildly specific, right? <laughs> <laughs> that came completely out of left field. Okay, so like, you know, you could do, I got I got arms on my chair. You can't even see me, but you know, you can do some chair dips. <laughs> you get, your, okay. get the tries in there, get the tries in there. Um, you could do some, some Russian twists. Okay. You can't see anything below the waist, but like I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing the Russian twist. Okay. Right now. <laughs> Why are you put me on the spot like this? Why you me on when you hear Black excellence, yeah. What do you, what do you think? It's funny. I mean, I, I, I almost touched on that question yesterday. No, I think it's the part of our culture that like the media doesn't show. Like the media doesn't like to show, so it's like something that we have to sort of champion ourselves, you know? We have to remind ourselves that we we are kings and queens. We're not what we are depicted as in the media. And we do have a reason to be proud of our heritage and where we come from and learn more. And I feel like all of that is black excellence to keep us striving and fighting for more. We're about to jump into some rapid fire. Brace yourself. How do you feel about squirrels? 
Well, um, they are mischievous little creatures and I do not trust them. Okay. <laughs> Sugar or salt in your grits? Uh, oh, salt. Would you rather good things happen to you or interesting things? Good things. Candy corn, your thoughts? Oh, I got candy corn uh, right there behind me. Go and get you some dry roasted peanuts. Mix it Go in there. I feel like I share. Okay, I got I got mixed nuts. I don't know if you can see that. I got mixed nuts. It's pistachios. Okay. And then I don't know, these are corn nuts. I'll grab some of the mixed nuts. Okay. But yeah. Yeah, I haven't tried it with cashews though. I don't know. I don't want hazelnut. Okay. I have a handful of different peanuts. If you don't like it, I'll try it. What? If you don't like it, I'm going to say you did it wrong. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to say you did it wrong. You're like, that ain't it. All right, all right. Let's go. Let's go. And you know what? That is not bad at all. Now, it's, you get the dry roast. Mm -hmm. You said That's what? better than trail mix. Like, the, the sweetness and the saltiness is hidden. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you get the dry you roast, might have, you might have just done done something, girl. I did something, okay? You might have done something. You get the uh, you get the dry roasted. It tastes like a payday. Oh my god! Yes, that's like the closest thing that I can relate it to. This mm -hmm. is okay, and you got it. You got it for posterity. Yo, this is hidden. <laughs> this is hidden right here. I'm not <laughs> mad at it. Thank you. Awesome. Yes. Drop the drum. I'm so proud of myself today. <laughs> I can clock out. I'm done for the day. The 4,400 was a food. What food would it be? It would be a gumbo. Okay. Every, a little bit of everything in it. <laughs> okay. Okay. I like that. What are you overthinking about right now? How, how goofy I look doing the, the chair <laughs> exercise. <laughs> You do some chair dips. <laughs> get you, get you. That's what I'm overthinking right now. What's for dinner? Chicken. Do you believe in aliens? If yes, yeah. if they've made contact. Um, I don't know if they've made contact, but I, I believe in them. Okay. I believe, like, they can't just be us in this whole big giant order of the universe. Um, if you could focus all of your energy on one social cause, what would it be? Police reform. Here. Look, that I mean that's amazing. Yes. You're doing so much. What um what can we expect next from you? It's funny, it's like the the short I produced a short film um right before I started shooting this. Uh it was actually the reason why they had changed my role, but it was we wrote it during Kenosha or as a response to what happened in Kenosha, and we wanted to have something out there that expressed what it was like to just live a day in the, in the shoes of a black person, but address bias. The film was called These Final Hours and we just started uh, it on its festival circuit. So we've done one festival so far and I was like this week and it was SCAD, but we ended up winning not only like as best like uh, in our category of black voices, but also the best short film in the festival uh, of show. And I, 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 I guess, that as that film goes out there, I want to encourage people to check it out or get some tickets to a festival uh, as we start to appear in local festivals near them to see the film. It's really, really poignant and it's really touching and it's really relevant right now. Mm -hmm.